I want to thank I want to thank RVOM, the Road Valley, the Road Valley Metaphysical Library, and all the people who work here, Nikki, Ariel, Jordan, and many many more people. It's just an amazing resource that we have to gather together. And I'd also like to give thanks to the land that we are on and the beautiful spirits and beings of this land that we are on right now, that we're here before we were. Mm -hmm. I just want to take a moment of just homage to the sacred land that we stand on. Mm. And in the spirit of, of this sacredness that we are already in together, I would like to offer an invocation. Please join me in your heart. All that is, beloved source, holy oneness, we call in your presence in this space now, and within each of us and around us, Please illuminate your presence this evening and bless this space in the highest light, the highest grounding and embodiment and protection. And I call in all the great beings of light who chant Kadosh, 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 Adonai Sivayot. Kadosh, 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 Adonai Sivayot. And I ask you to be present in this space this evening, along with all the great beings of grace. We welcome you tonight. I ask to be a pure and clear channel for this grace, your energy, beloved source, to come through me for everyone here for this space and for whatever is needed need of this evening to be shared. I ask and pray that everyone here receive whatever is needed for their well-being as a gift this evening. And I thank you. I thank you for the incredible protection around this space. In deepest gratitude, a hope, Matakuyasa. All our relations, so be it. Svaha. My name is Isa Lara Marie, and I've lived in the valley for about 24 years. And for about 33 years, I have been working as a healer, mostly in, as a channel, in a medium, a body-centered counselor as well, and also <coughs> in the shamanic arts and shamanic work as well. And my life has been dedicated to what I call consciousness, or God, or source. And I use these words interchangeably to point to this, this that we cannot really name, the Creator. And I did not come in wanting to be a healer. I had some life circumstances in this life that were very severe. Severe abuse, actually ritual cult sexual abuse as a child for many, many years, as well as familial abuse. And I was absolutely cracked open by that experience, those experiences in my whole younger years. And that was my doorway to grace. 
It was through the trauma. And I realized that this grace, which I'm going to define and talk about a little more as the night goes on, carried me as a child. This, this divine source carried me. And I was out of body, severely dissociated for 22 years of my life, the first 22 years of my life. And this force was always with me. And of course, as a child, I didn't know what it was. I didn't have a name for it. I just felt this presence in times that were so hard and times I didn't want to stay in my body, times I, I wanted to leave and check out. And this force, it was like a friend that I could feel almost holding my hand at times, invisibly. And no matter what was happening to my body, and a lot was happening to my body that was horrible, <clears throat> this force was there and because I was out. And so I was absolutely witnessing what was happening to my body years and years and years of my entire youth until age 19. And this force was, was carrying me. And I call this grace. And so that grace that I also call, also call First Light, which is the name of the book that I have published this spring, which is over here, which will be available at the end as well. This is another word that I use for this grace, is this first light. This first light or this grace, it carried me. By the time I was 19, it helped me escape, escape North Carolina, where this horrific trauma was happening to me in the church and in my family. It helped me get out of the state and escape, and it actually ended up taking me to my teacher, Lita Rose. Who saved my life? Who absolutely, at age 22, saved my life? I was a mess. I was out of body. I had every disease you could imagine. I had adrenal fatigue, chronic fatigue. I was allergic to every food except for three foods at that time. I had chronic belly infections. I had a spinal disability by the time I was 20 where I could lift only a cup, like a coffee cup, without having excruciating pain down my leg and all through my spine. And I was absolutely disabled the first, off and on, the first 10 years of my life. Medication didn't touch it, supplements didn't touch it, every single alternative modality that I tried didn't touch it until I met my teacher. Lita Rose. And this is in my book, the story of this and how I got there and all of that. But this grace is what is what brought me there. And the moment that we met, it was this incredible moment of, you ever have that experience where you meet someone and you're like, where have you been? Like, it just feels like you've no, like, it's destiny. It's destiny. Maybe you feel you've known them your whole life. And that was the meeting of Rita Rose and I. And on that day, the first day that I entered her home for healing, to receive healing, because I was disabled, literally, and suicidal at that time. We had the awareness in that moment. We knew that I was her student and that she had been waiting for me. And so from the very first day in the, in the session, I had a huge awakening. This is in my book in much more detail. We also knew that it was for me to, in that moment, I knew immediately as that awakening was happening, my life's path was to work with leaders. 
And so in that very moment, I dedicated my life at age 22 to serving what I call the one. And I thought, I've suffered so much in the life by then. I didn't want anyone else to suffer. I thought if anybody's suffering as much as the, I could barely bear how much I was suffering with the memories I was having and the pain in my body and the horrific memories that would just flood me. And I thought, I don't want anyone else to be stuck with that on any level, through anything. And so in that moment, I was lit up like a fire with like, I will do whatever I can. I make a commitment to God and every, everyone, everything, that I will do whatever it takes to bring healing to this planet, to be a conduit of healing. And by healing, I don't mean taking away all the pains or the symptoms. I don't mean the absence of symptomology or sensation. I mean the ability to bring things into integration, into wholeness, amidst whatever is happening. Maybe the pain goes away, hopefully. Maybe it doesn't. But to really alleviate any attachment or identification with suffering, to be able to help the soul move beyond that level of identification and to have real freedom, true freedom, and I call that awakening. And so as that burning rose in me and I made that commitment, I had to heal myself. And as I said, I was a mess. And I didn't know the first thing about healing, and so I immediately began, through Lita Rose's you know, guidance, learning how it is that I could receive that. And so tonight, what I, I would like to do, and at some point I will speak more, uh, a little bit about the book at the end, but I did write this book recently, six months ago, as I said. It came really out of the healing of these experiences over, I would say, about a 30-year process. And so this book is a compilation of part memoir of literally how I healed, what I learned, the wisdom that came to me, the, the tools, the help, all of it. And content of story of my symptoms and the abuse and all of it to give you context. It's part memoir and the other last half of my book are tools and resources of what I learned you know, wisdom and guidance, tools about how to heal anything, any kind of trauma, different illnesses, and to really cultivate your connection with the divine. How does one do that? And throughout the book, I also speak of this, div this mystical force that I'm gonna go into more now about grace. So, I'm, I'm praying that as many people will find this resource as possible, friends, family, clients, a therapist, so that we can really break these bonds of secrecy on the planet and how hard it is to speak the truth of, of hard things that happen and traumas that happen. So that brings me to this mystical force. What is grace? I bet when I say that, I'm imagining everyone has a different possible idea of this. And so at some point a little later in the evening, we're going to share about that. I just want to share what my experience of grace is, and I want to honor that there are infinite experiences of grace. And I, I will describe that my experience is this is a divine force, it's an absolute place in the realm of spirit, a force, a frequency that is available. It lives inside of us, and it lives around us. And when I experience grace, I, f I feel this presence of comfort and sometimes soothing, almost like a balm. 
sometimes as if someone's holding my hand or holding me or even carrying me. And there is often the feeling when grace is present that everything's okay. Even when in the physical realm, it may not seem very okay situationally, but there is a feeling sense that one taps into in the presence of this force. Now, I often feel this presence as a white light, Mm. as this beautiful, like, when I close my eyes and I feel the presence of grace so often in my past, it was this shimmering, white, just luminescent, and sometimes, like, just sparkling energy, very subtle, that would come into my energy field. Almost like snow. Grace would feel like snow to me, like just snow falling so quietly and peacefully. And so this presence is so available to us. And what happens is sometimes when we need it the most, we forget. We forget to actually call upon it. And I would like tonight to just really offer sort of a journey for you to go on with me tonight. That I want to invite you to drop even more from your head into your heart. Just breathing in the heart. And as we share together, I would like to invite you to feel your light body, which is another word for the aura or the energy field. So your light body is a cocoon around your physical body. It's all around every side, below, above. It's incredible. The light that you are is magnificent. And this light is with you all the time. And it holds your energy field, your consciousness, your mind, your emotions, everything is within this field. And so if you expand right now even into your light body, you just can do that just by relaxing and softening. Just allow yourself to take up space. We're all sharing space. Just feel that. And you can listen from your light body tonight to this presentation and our sharing. This is your second skin. And you're listening through your second skin. And there are little antenna, there are little tendrils that come out of your chakras <coughs> and also out of your light body. And these tendrils, okay, I'm going to talk a bit louder here. These tendrils are reaching. They're reaching out your light body and out your chakra system. They're luminous fibers of light. And in that, they sense. They're receiving information at every moment. And so tonight on our journey together, you can receive this information And I invite you to listen with your extra ears, your other, your extra sensory ears, and your extra sensory eyes. And together, we are going to go on a journey of exploring grace and learn together. So, how? How do we access this grace? We've talked about what it is, but how do we feel it more? I'm just going to share with you how I feel it more. And a little later, we'll hear from you all about how you do that. So one of the things about any kind of divine healing or frequency that you're wanting to call in 
I recommend, and I like to start with the power of intent. The power of intent. This is a shamanic term, and it's a very powerful term. And what that means is laser-like focus. And so this laser-like focus, we make an intention. We say, I, I am calling in grace. I am calling in grace. So I recommend that you use the words I am, the divine words of presence, I am, and place whatever you're wanting in manifest reality beside that. I am calling in grace. And immediately when you say this or hold this in your heart, you have activated already your light body. Your light body is aware, it's intelligent, and it is already moving and maneuvering to orchestrate, to align you in that grace. And so starting with intention, and I feel a little like I'm yelling at you, but they're asking me to speak really loudly. And so I just want to preface that <laughs> very loudly. Uh, our recorder is not working. So I am calling in grace. And then feel your light body align that you are now attuning to that frequency. So the first step is intention. And the second step is attunement. And so now we are attuning. And we're turning our station, our channel, to the frequency of grace. <coughs> and we can do that even more by feeling our heart again and breathing into the heart and opening the heart. And if your heart feels closed and you don't want to open your heart, you can just be with that. Just be with that as well. And so breathing into the heart and allowing the heart to expand and feel yourself attuning with this channel of grace and beginning to receive. I found that grace loves and these divine frequencies love to come in when we're open and we're open to receiving. And so we receive by softening and by relaxing, relaxing the muscles in our body, and softening with whatever's present. And this is sort of the setup to accessing grace now. And now, we can add in the crown chakra, this beautiful chakra at the top of your head. And we are going to, I invite you just to gently, in circles, lightly, or tapping either way, just circles, and just help that top chakra open. This chakra opens to the heavens and to source like a lotus flower, it's beautiful. And you're just allowing that to open even more vastly in this moment. Just feeling the presence of that window. It's like a window of light and you're letting this open to the heavens. And as you do this, you can feel the white light, the shimmering grace, the energy began to come down the crown. This beautiful white light of grace. And just breathing and softening and allowing the grace to come down the body. We're going to do this a little more deeply as the night goes on. But this, I notice you're all doing it, which is beautiful. It's happening already. 
And this is your access. Opening that crown, letting that flow down and in, and letting it saturate your body and all the cells of your body. And there is another step that we can add. It's not necessary. So first, I'm just kind of going through these steps. We're going to do this a little longer in just a minute. The last step you can add in is if you, if you have or believe or know or experience spirit guides, you can absolutely call in your guides, the beings of light that work with you. And there are amazing beings of light who govern grace, the Divine Mother in all her forms, many, many different forms, Kuan Yin, Mary, Alma, Tara, Isis, many, many, Sophia. It's infinite. You can call in any form of guide. You can call in the angelic realm, the Elohim of grace, We are invoking these presences now and these energies now to come forth. And so just feel yourself knowing that you can call in also your own personal guidance to help you access this grace. And if that is not in your reality, it is not needed. You, solely you, are enough. You are enough to heal, you are enough to awaken, and you are enough to call in grace. There is no external force needed ever. You are enough. And so it may just be that you are being with that own invoking yourself of this presence. So these are the steps that I have learned and I have cultivated, and there are many others that we're going to share in a bit here that you all do as well to access this energy, and we'll do a little more experience with this in a moment, a little deeper journey. But I just want to remind you that the most important thing about accessing grace is practicing. Because it's like you're developing a spiritual muscle. You're at the gym and you're practicing this. And so if you just do this five minutes a day, a couple times a day, you can really develop this spiritual muscle so that you can feel this extra presence, this presence of grace with you, especially when you're out of your center and having a hard time. So the most important thing to remember is when you're having a hard time or you're in need, call on this force and it will carry you. Practice, practice while you're washing dishes, while you're taking a shower, while you're walking, while you're watching a movie, call it in, feel it, and practice. So what I found in accessing this grace and living with this grace all these years, by its grace, is that it created for me and for the people that I work with miraculous resilience. Like, I have seen so many miracles happen in my private practice and in my own life in the presence of this energy. And it also lends this incredible resilience. You recover quicker, your symptoms change faster, your emotional states can change for the better much quicker and guidance can come in very quickly to help you at any moment 
when you have this particular frequency and channel activated, and you've really cultivated this muscle, you begin to have this incredible bandwidth where less things trigger you, you're able to stay in your center more. And I also find that you just don't react because it's like you have a buffer, a beautiful thick buffer, almost like a blanket, like a white blanket of this grace around you. And I find that you know, so that bandwidth is, is real it really increases and your sense of presence really increases. And so you can hold your center when very difficult things happen in life that maybe you would have reacted to. And what a blessing that is to yourself, but also everyone around you who might be going through something very difficult or might be afraid and not know how to come back to their center. And so in this way, we help each other. We help each other with the ripple effect of this. <clears throat> so as we have miraculous resilience, the last piece I found with accessing this grace and embodying it in life is it absolutely activates your energy field, your light body. And it does that by, as that presence is with you, it's filling you up. And so you no longer are doing things. You are being carried. You are being moved by the divine. You are being shown what is next. The book falls off the shelf. Oh, thank you. I needed to read that. Or your friend calls and they say, you need to go to that Joe Dispenza workshop or whatever it is, like the next piece comes, right? Because you become in this like synchronistic flow where things are moving and flowing and your light body begins to feel, fill up with this light. And as it fills up with this light, you literally begin vibrating at a higher frequency, literally, like physically in quantum physics, you begin vibrating and accelerating. And in that, you heal quicker. You feel absolutely more peace. There are so many gifts that perhaps might be latent inside of you that actually have a chance to turn on. And I've seen people's latent gifts as their light body activates. Gifts they had when they were a little child that perhaps got sort of repressed from trauma or programming or something like that, they come online again. And so as your light body expands and it activates, you then have literally more light in your space. And you are in a space of less effort Life is flowing, there's a surrender, the trying and the efforting is really gone at that point. So this is a beautiful thing because not only do you have more energy, but that energy that you do have more of can be for whatever you want to create. And so it creates incredible levels of potentiality for what you're really wanting. So, I think it might be time for a little deeper journey. Are y'all open for that? For just a little deeper journey where we can um, do a little healing here? Okay, all right. So I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and feel your seat with contact with the chair and your feet on the ground. Just feel the anchoring of the earth.
and breathing, just breathing deep breaths and inhaling and exhaling. And allowing your body to soften and allow your mind to drop down and sit on the throne of your heart like a pillow on your heart, resting in the heart. Breathing into your light body and feeling your light body expand. Feeling the top of your head again, the crown. If you wish to tap or move your hand in circles lightly over your head, just allowing this chakra to open even more. The crown chakra governs grace. It is like your extra savings account that you didn't know you had. That is your crown chakra. That is the bank of grace that lives in the crown. It's like, wow, I have this savings account and I didn't know I had that. And you're tapping into that now, allowing the crown to open like a lotus flower, a white lotus flower to the heavens. And I ask you on the silence or whispering to whisper or on your breath, I am calling in grace. and feel your intent form in your energy body. I am calling in grace. I am calling in the light of grace. And now attuning, feeling your heart open and turning your channel to the channel of grace just by opening and relaxing and receiving. And allow this light, this white light, to begin to pour down through your crown. Down through your crown and all through the central channel of your body, the pranic channel of your body. And just feel this grace pouring through as you breathe in and breathe out, you are expanding into the field of light, the quantum field, you are becoming space. As this grace pours forth down and through, and breathing and allowing your breath to be heard and visible, audible. And now, calling in silently your guide or guidance and asking, even if it is your higher self, asking your guidance, your guide, to come forth and to assist you in activating this channel of grace, opening this channel of grace, and downloading into you the new neural pathways necessary for this channel to open. Just breathing this in on the breath. You are being carried, 
feel how you are being carried as you breathe on the wings of grace. Allowing your energy to expand, stay present. Come back to your heart and your breath and expanding beyond the boundaries of your body. Receiving, receiving the nectar, the holy nectar of this nourishment, this nourishment of grace receiving the nectar of this nourishment. Whispering, I am carried by grace. I am carried by grace. I am carried by grace. Whispers of, I am carried by grace. I am grace. I am grace. Stay with it, just allowing this white light to permeate every cell of your body, becoming pure space. Even leaning and resting backwards in your chair, allowing the chair to hold you and the quantum field to hold you now. Let this force of grace carry you, leaning back into and resting in. That everything is okay, everything is well. just as it is. Notice in this moment, for I see many, many light beings in this space, very beautiful, tall light beings standing around the space. Just notice if you can feel this presence that we have of community, of galactic community right now. They are here and they are helping us and they love helping us. Just feel their presence. Sometimes it's very subtle. It's a subtle feeling (coughs) of extra support. Stay with it just a couple more minutes, relaxing into the field of grace. I am grace. Let's whisper together. I am grace. I am grace. I am grace. grace. Just like popcorn. I am grace. I am grace. I am grace. Feel that, feel that coming in, wow. 
beautiful energy coming in. <sighs> wow. Just drink, drink and receive what you are. Just drink. If there is something troubling you or that you wish help with in this moment to be healed, I invite you in this moment in your heart and your energy body to, if you wish, lift your hands, carry it in your hands, and begin to give it over. Just let it go. Just give it to source, to the one, the holy oneness. Give this up to the creator to heal, to answer. You can let this prayer go, fly like a dove out of your heart into the wings of the divine right now. It is yours. Just let the beloved have it. You might state the result that you wish for, the word or the phrase internally of the resolution that you wish. And feel that, feel that energy of that answer already here now in your heart space. Feel that now. Imagine the feeling of that right now. Healing and manifestation responds most deeply to feeling, to the vibration. Not so much the words, not so much the thought, but the actual vibration of what we are vibrating and feeling emotionally as well. And so feel this feeling now in your heart of what you already are answered. The prayer is answered. And let this move through your entire body into your light body. <clears throat> Feel the end result now. And let's give thanks, give thanks for this answered prayer. Moving into gratitude. Thank you, thank you, Great Spirit, for this prayer answered. Remember this feeling, bookmark this feeling right now in your body, in your felt sense. So that's the physical sensation of your body. Bookmark this feeling. So that you call this any moment, you can call it back to you. This feeling, this is your birthright. This is your prayer answered. And you can feel this every day until in physical manifestation it has come to pass. And as you feel ready, We will come back into this altered space together that we are in. Feel free to keep a part of your awareness in this deep place, anchored in as you already are. 
and also welcoming you back into our sharing here. share what I would love to know what your experience is has been just now and if there were any surprises or discoveries or just your experience just to open the space for us to learn from each other sensations in my body because I dropped in deep enough to allow that, which is good. That's wonderful. Yeah, so often we, we're out of touch. So often with the end of our physical body yeah. and what's actually happening and listening to it. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, thank you. beautiful. So it got you more connected. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And peaceful, very peaceful. So I came in very heavy hearted tonight and really, really not feeling anything possible. And just by going through this process with you, is just there's this. Well, not only just the possibility of the lightness of who I really am and, 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 and touching that, but just that I can continue to access that, that I could actually stop and just do this simple reconnection. I mean, first of all, I love the word, word grace, you know, as a way to express whatever that divine light is, but it's... Um, it's just been very, very beautiful to just sort of feel a, a whole nother way of being than, and, and see it in contrast to, you know, an hour ago. Oh, wow. That's so beautiful. Thank you. So again, this, how quickly yeah. it could change, yeah. even mm -hmm. when it seems heavier or almost like it might last a really long time. Yeah. yeah. It can change like that. Yeah. Something that happens to me um, is I go deep into the body <coughs> with the breath and I kind of become empty even though I feel more full in the body. And then I'm able to tune in to something bigger. So it's still in me but it's also bigger. And then that bigger thing is like inside of me looking out through my eyes. It's like I'm not just me, Heather, body, ego. And something that happens a lot is I feel the cranial parts of my, uh, like occipital, occipital moving and like this like kind of a figure eight and the hands want to move. So it's like I'm going inside and grounding to the body, but then the hands are moving and helping me get out of my body simultaneously <laughs> and connect it all. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Spirit moving you. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. Clay, sorry. It's okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to put it in words very well, and my experience is trying to put it into words would limit the experience. But there's a. Oh, my voice is a little bit sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, there's a definite spaciousness, and there's, and even though you were inviting us to 
you know, focus on parts of our body. I, I was not in my body. I was, I don't know that the word is dissociated, dissociated or something, but I, I don't like that word, but I yeah. think that's the word that is often used to describe yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. You know, I use the term possibly a little differently that I do see people be just out of body mm-hmm. and not dissociated. Okay. Right. That's a, that if it. A whole nother that's right. Yes. Yeah. So that simply I'm perhaps. Not to use words anyway. Right. It's, right. It's, yeah. Perhaps you were just out of body, mm-hmm. which we okay. all are at different times. Well, yeah, that was the, so that would have been the expansions, mm-hmm. the spaciousness of being there. Yeah, yeah. Being that's right. Larger and, yeah. and so that's beautiful that you just trusted that, and it wasn't it wasn't alarming or anything. Mm-hmm. Just with that, right? Right. Yeah, beautiful. So your your being knew what it needed and what was present for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I thought I saw just when you invited some beings in, and I forget what you called them, but yeah. there were at least six or eight tall light beings, six yes. or eight feet tall, scattered through the room. Mm-hmm. And then a little bit later, I saw them beginning to work on people. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's how you perceive it. I did. Thank you so much. Yeah. What is your name? Dave. Dave, thank you. Yeah. I did as well, yeah, I saw them lining through around the whole room, actually, up here and all the way around. Yeah, just as you called them in, too, you called them in and they were there. Beautiful. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Any other shares about this piece that you want to share or offer how you access grace that we haven't talked about? Anybody? I'd like to share. <coughs> yeah. I really love the, um, the image of the lotus on the head. So I just felt like I was like wearing a big lotus hat. <laughs> that was cool. Um, that, so that the light could just kind of funnel down into it. And there was a moment, you know, there's always something really beautiful about doing meditation in groups. There was a beautiful moment where I just felt like this energy, and for me it was like a blue, it it shows up as like a blue light, but it just, there was a moment where the energy just sort of descended, like at the same time. It was like all of a sudden we were all synchronized. Mm -hmm. Um, And that, that was just really sweet. Mm-hmm. And then I also felt the presence of the beings you were talking about, mm-hmm. um, and just the benevolence <coughs> of that. So, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. I also want to mention that for me it's really important to stay in my body, and so putting my hand on my heart and my womb was was really helpful to just really bring mm-hmm. the light into the body yeah. and then also I loved the feeling of expanding and I, I feel like I could feel the whole room all of us expanding yeah. into our you know fields so that was cool too yeah mm-hmm. very powerful could you all feel at the end the cohesion in here mm-hmm. the harmony yeah. it was like a a blending mm-hmm. of harmony in the space it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yes, sometimes I would do this, this practice in different ways, and I I wonder if anybody had trouble coming back. That you were so mm-hmm. expanded that it was actually a little difficult to just kind of come, you know, back to the here and now. Did anybody have that tonight, or was it pretty easy a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, so that that sometimes happens where it takes a little time to come back as well. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I really enjoyed practicing that with you all. That was a beautiful thing. And 
I think we're winding down, actually. I just, yeah, I just share just a, a little teeny more about uh, my ministry, Eternal Grace Ministry. So I, I just want to share kind of a humorous snippet a little bit, which is that until three years ago, I was the hermit healer. I was known as the hermit healer. My <laughs> friends used to call me that. The hermit healer on the hill. <laughs> and I did everything just word of mouth, and I barely had, I didn't even use my business cards. And then um, about three years ago, I was guided to, all of a sudden, I got guidance to get a website, create a website. And so I did that. Shortly after that, I was guided to create a, a spiritual organization called Eternal Grace Ministry, which I have spoken about, and I believe Nikki mentioned that as well. And I just want to say that the organization that I've created, we are, we are now a legal church, and we are non-religious affiliation, just uh, oneness and devotion to the one consciousness, and, and the church is devoted to healing and awakening and diversity and equality of all people. And we're s very dedicated to just spreading the, the healing work and the practices so that many, many more people can receive resources. And so we do receive donations to the ministry, tax-deductible donations to the ministry as well. And those go to people who cannot afford healing. They go to the scholarship fund. Mm -hmm. And they are for people who are all around the world. I get requests all the time from people all around the world who need healing and don't have resources. And so as soon as those donations come in, they go straight to the scholarship. And so I just want you to know that piece as well. I want you to know before we close, too, that my book is here. And uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like. <laughs> So this is the book that I wrote, mm -hmm. First Light, and I was 10 years ago in a sexual trafficking workshop education on how to end sexual trafficking, and I was just lit up. I, I was like, I have to do something to help mm -hmm. stop this. And I closed my eyes and I went into a deep meditation. There were hundreds of people in the workshop. It was in Medford. And I just said, what would you have of me? What do you want me to do? And I heard a voice whisper, write your story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Write your story. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, anything but that. <laughs> Anything but that. I was like, what else do you want me to do? <laughs> I was like, not that. It's like, it's too personal. It's too vulnerable. I don't know how to write. I'm not a writer. And I had a little bit of an argument, you could say, with God, with spirit. A little bit of resistance, you know, like tug of war. And it was like, didn't last very long. And it was like, oh. Gosh, okay. <laughs> and that took me 10 years. I tried. I tried to write this book for 10 years. And when I started to write it, I would be flooded. I was flooded with memory. And I was flooded with resistance. And I was flooded with all the things that I had not. Humbly, I had thought I had processed over 30 years of healing, 33 years of healing. And I hadn't quite finished. And so 10 years later, so this finally came out this spring. Mm -hmm. And I, I just pray that it will reach into the hands of anybody who's mm -hmm. needing. It's really just about inspiration mm -hmm. and miraculous resilience. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to leave you with that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I also mm -hmm. want to let you know before you leave that on my, uh, my cards are here. I have tons of free resources. So if you go to my web, my website is on my card. If you know of anyone who needs support or care for trauma or any kind of healing, it doesn't have to be trauma, 
through different, my different healing modalities, please feel free to pass these along. I have uh, free videos on my website as well as Facebook and lots of other social media sites. And that's all found through my cards here. I also have meditations and transmissions on my website mm. and a course that I created as well called The Language of Light and Basic Introduction to Energy Medicine. And you can take, it's very simple and you take it at your own timing online and it introduces you to a sample of what we did tonight mm -hmm. but much more in depth mm -hmm. in The Language of Light. And mm -hmm. so, I'm wondering if I've forgotten anything <laughs> at all, <laughs> except to thank each and one, every one of you for coming out tonight. And I, I'm just wondering if you have any questions that are just general, uh, whether it's about anything, really, my story or anything at all. I just want to leave the space open. So um, the process that we went through tonight, it had, have you set it up in a way where one might be able to go to that same process, meaning just being led um, through what you did tonight, but it being captured on, on, you know, on technology? So like, like it's almost a YouTube to just down, yeah. download Grace. <laughs> I was just wondering if you've done that. You know, I, might do that. I will do that for you. <laughs> it's, it's right there. It was just yeah. recorded. I mean, and it was just I recorded. Was so I think we that. can just write. Thank but you. thank you. I actually will. I will do that solo by itself and make that available um, probably on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And that would go out through my newsletter. So please sign up. If you would like to receive my monthly newsletter, my email list is right here. And that way you could find about these resources and upcoming offerings that I'll be doing as well. Yeah. That's a great idea. Thank you. I will do that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The newsletter itself is a resource. Thank you. I do, I do videos for the newsletter of these sorts of exercises for you to have. And I always write on a topic that I I'm guided to write about mm. for support in our current times. And I just, I want to hold the intention that we could beam out this amazing energy out to the debate mm. and to our country right now, mm. to all the politicians, send them love, send them illumination. May they be guided by the divine. Mm. May this energy ripple out today and touch absolutely anyone in need of healing mm -hmm. or awakening on any level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the hurricane comes to mind. Yes. And thank yes. you, Kimberly, yes. and also to North Carolina and any other communities affected, any other places on Earth that need this energy right now. Let's just take a moment mm -hmm. just sending this energy in all directions.